Let's do a classic example of work, a lifting problem. That is to say, we're going to compute how much work is done when we lift an object. And for the purposes of these problems, we're going to introduce an alternate set of units for work and force, the English units. These are uniquely well suited to lifting problems because you see that force is measured in pounds. And the force required to lift an object at a constant rate of speed is precisely the weight of the object in pounds. So this is very nice for this type of problem. Then distance is measured in feet, work is measured in foot pounds. And let's state the example that we would do. A five pound bucket at the bottom of a 20 foot well is lifted to the top of the well at a constant rate using a rope, which weighs 0 0.08 pounds per foot. How much work is done in total. So the first thing to observe is that we cannot use the work equals force times distance formula. We have to use the integral. And that's because of the rope. So here's our bucket at the bottom of a 20 foot well. And this bucket is being drawn up. And the weight of the bucket isn't changing. It's five pounds. But as the bucket is drawn up, the amount of rope that you have to lift is decreasing. So the less rope there is, the lighter the load and the less force you have to use. So we do have to use the integral equation here. And let's try to work that out. We are vertically moving an object. So let's use y. y equals zero can be the bottom of the well. y equals 20 can be the top of the well. And this bucket is moving up along this number line from y equals zero to y equals 20. And we want to know how much work is done over the course of that move. Well, the work is the integral of the force. We start at zero, we end at 20. We need this force function. And because we're using pounds to measure force, we can think of this force function as a weight 
function. If you have some value of y, how much weight are you lifting at this moment? Well, the weight can be broken into two pieces. You've got the bucket, and that's not changing. The bucket weighs five pounds and it will continue to weigh five pounds. And you've got the rope. What does the rope weigh? Well, first of all, at this moment, how much rope are you lifting? You're lifting this amount of rope. If this is y equals 20 and this is y, this unit, this interval, I guess I should call it, has a length 20 minus y. This is the length of the rope in feet. So the weight is the length of the rope in feet times point zero 0.08. Remember, every foot of rope weighs 0 0.08 pounds. So if you combine the weight of the bucket and the weight of the rope when the bucket is at y, our force function is five plus point zero eight times twenty minus y. And now to make good on this problem. We just have to compute this integral, 0 0.08 times 20. Let me pause this video and plug that into a calculator. It is 1.6. 1.6. Is six point six minus point zero eight Y DY anti differentiate six point six Y minus Point zero four y squared evaluated from zero to twenty. So plug twenty in everywhere y appears. I frequently kind of skate past this step, but it doesn't hurt to remind ourselves what we're actually doing. Plug zero in every place Y appears, and let's not make any errors now.
And let me pause this video while I plug this into a calculator. And I get 116. And remember for the units we're using, work is measured in foot pounds. And um, that's, that's it for that example, I guess. And I think that's it for this section. I have sometimes in the past covered a little more of this, but I don't think students tend to find it super rewarding. So I'm experimenting with cutting out some of the material that's in the textbook.